Okay, go ahead. Oh, wait a second. One second. Okay. Go ahead. Hello, my name is Beato Sosi Pena. I'm from Santa Clara, Pueblo, New Mexico, and I'm with an organization called Tewa Women United, based out of Española. And it's good to be here and, and connect with um, a lot of people on the issues that are affecting all of us and that are, I'm finding are really interconnected in a lot of ways, um, which was a, a big realization that I had coming here, um, meeting other Native peoples and coming together and, and seeing the commonalities with all our issues and realizing how we really need to come together more and um, unify on a lot of these issues and collaborate more. And so hopefully this will um, get the ball rolling on providing that kind of space in the future. Um, more often and I'd like to talk about some of the issues happening at home where we're from um, in Table Women United I work with the environmental health and justice part of our program and the big issue we're facing is uh, the nuclear weapons industry with uh, Los, Al Los Alamos National Laboratories and um, there's a um, part of our, we're, our our mountains are all really sacred to us, but the the Hemis Mountains were, that were occupied by the labs um, when they were developing the the first atomic bomb um, hold special significance for us. A lot of our ancestral knowledge comes from there, and we've es we've essentially been cut off from a lot of our sacred spaces, and um, now we're having to deal with a lot of sickness and health effects from the pollution that's happening there's a um, there's open air burning that they're doing for waste that they deem is too dangerous to um, transport on the roads and so basically they have these big metal troughs where any kind of uh, high explosive materials or chemicals that they think is too dangerous to transport they'll they'll burn it in this big trough and it's and they're releasing it into our air and we don't want them to release these things into our air that we all share collectively um, there's legacy waste that has been dumped there that has never been cleaned up. Um, there's not, we're trying to get assurances so that if they do get away with expanding the facilities, um, right now there's the, they're working on expanding the facilities to include the CMRR building, which is the chemical research facility, something, I can't remember the last letter, but it's a, um, huge facility supposedly the size of like three super Walmarts and they want to expand pit production which is producing the triggers that would detonate nuclear weapons and um, this to go with the accord from the federal level where we should the moratorium on um, reducing nuclear weapons and halting uh, weapons production this, this goes against that and so it's going against the um, it's going against the times right now. We don't we don't need this in our communities. We don't need this in the world, and so that's happening. And we're trying to you know a lot of issues that come with building that faci facility. Also, is like the amazing amount of water they're going to use, the the amount of cement they're going to use, the way they're going to have to truck uh, materials in, um, the dirt they're going to have to 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 haul out to make this facility underground. Um, the labs are also on top of one of the biggest fault lines in the nation, and so there's there hasn't been enough um, research on the safety of even having the labs on top of this, you know, with the with the seismic risks. Um, there's just so many issues around this that affect us. Our, you know, we live in the desert community, and our water supply is really precious to us. And um, it's apparent that they're they're doing the least possible. Um, Like yeah, the least the, the cheapest way that they can to to monitor the wall the wells and uh, and um, keep our water safe. So our water supply is in big danger. And you know, as a desert people, it's really important. Like once our water's polluted, that's it. You know, it's water is our life. It's it's everything. And so we need to it needs to be protected more. Um, there needs to be clean up. There needs to be. Uh, a recognition of what's been done to our to our sacred mountains there i was i was uh, fortunate to visit um this area g where they they have their uh, nuclear waste dump i know you th you'd think with all these scientists there and, and all their technology that they would have a way of you know of dealing with the waste they produce and it's just a dump you know they have these 
um, these unlined pits where they're putting these barrels of nuclear waste, whether it's liquid, mixed waste, or solid wa radioactive waste. They dip, the, they dip these barrels in some kind of jelly, to kind of, I guess, to help with corrosion. They put them in, um, if you can imagine, an open pit with just these barrels in there, and then they, they bury them, and they'll put another layer, and they'll bury that, and this pit probably goes down. That's, what they've, that's where they've been doing it. It's just these, um, putting it in the ground. That's, that's going to be there forever. This waste doesn't go away. This is going to be here for thousands of years, you know, and it, what's, why are we producing more of it? So, um, it's, it's just, I'm scared for my children, I'm scared for my grandchildren, I'm scared for our elders, people, um, I've lost a lot of relatives to cancer, some of my dear elder friends are being diagnosed with cancer, and uh, there's a lot of, you know, there's never been any health studies done, um, we just need a lot of support and help in and uh, people speaking out against these issues in our communities and a lot of native communities are affected by the nuclear weapons industry you know there's the mining communities there's the um there's the downwind communities from the first nuclear nuclear bombing you know people say it was hiroshima but it was new mexico you know and that's we were they bombed us and people people there were at the trinity test site are, are just sick they're so sick there and generations have been sick and They've never had any kind of compensation for that, and um, the least they could do is give them, you know, like free, free health care, free medical care for those people. And uh, I think all people in New Mexico, and um, hopefully that could happen. And uh, I uh, think you, you know, there's a couple questions that come up to my mind: is um, open air burning? They just throw all of this debris in in pots or in the ground in these metal containers and they just burn it. Yeah, it's basically a, a long metal trough and it's, you know, it's a lot of waste, um, not really radioactive, but it's, it's chemical. And from the explosives and the bombs they're testing and um, yeah, they, they burn it into air and, they're, and the state, through the state laws, they're not required to do air monitoring for that. And so none of, it, it seems like there's absolutely no compliance with the uh, uh, test ban treaty and you were saying they're still building triggers mm-hmm they're doing uh, plutonium triggers and um, they're trying to increase that production which which goes against the, the treaty I can say. And and, and what is uh, the contact information uh, for your group um, we'll get that in a minute but <laughs> like you know <laughs> well, my, my uh, co-worker and a uh, esteemed elder is with me tonight, today, and she'll talk a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> but we're with uh, Table Women United, and um, our number is 753-505-753-3259. Uh, you could look uh, look us up at um, www.tablewomenunited.org. How, how would you spell that, if you um, it's real slowly? T-E-W-A Women United dot org. And so, um, you know, it's, this issue came to me when, uh, you know, I had moved back home to my Pueblo, you know, getting my education and, and coming home. And I was so happy to be home with my daughters and where they could be with their, you know, learn about their culture and their people, like, and come to live this place as I did. And, you know, our place is everything. It's, it's our center of our spirit. And um, I'm sure it would be really convenient for everybody if it just got so contaminated that we had to leave. We won't, we won't leave. That's our. That's where home. You know. That's where we're. That's where we're at. What is the significance of being at the U.S. Social Forum in in coordinating resistance to this particular problem and developing some kind of action? The significance for me has been connecting with the the mining communities. You know, the tribes in Arizona, the the uranium mining communities, because um, that's kind of been a piece I think that's been missing in our collaboration. You know, we work a lot with the the ones based out of New Mexico, but you know this, this uranium, the ore is getting shipped in from all over, and they're trying to even open new mines. Um, so do you, do you find that there are a lot of uh, other folks that are impacted similarly to your community? Yes, that's what I'm. That's what I'm realizing, and um, the, and it's not just with with the nuclear industry. It's 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 the coal industry. It's the um, drilling industry that you know these are all just devastating our, our environments and um, um, 
there's just a lot of commonalities with, with you know, this, 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 these industries that are that are unhealthy, and um, I think with that, uh, there needs to be a, a consciousness about, you know, there's a lot of talk right now about nuclear energy being green energy, and it's it's really not that, you know, it's not green energy. And 250,000 years <laughs> of uh, protecting the waste, and they still haven't figured out what to do with the first ounce of it, mm -hmm. um, and there's tons of it. Uh, that's it's pretty. You know, one of the thoughts is that the new churches, uh, if humankind is going to survive, that religions, so to speak, are going to be hazard hazmat teams. Uh, that are in, you know, they're going to have to be located on these uh, sites like this place where they got open pit bur burials of uh, of these of this stuff. It's going to last two hundred thousand years. That's mm -hmm. a long time to kind of protect the waste. Yeah, you know, now that you say that about churches, um, the site where this this waste dump is, it was actually a a site where some of our oldest kivas were in this um these ruins and and. That's equivalent to taking out everything inside of a church and putting nuclear waste barrels inside of it, and so they or dug a sewage plant. Sew yeah, and so <laughs> they they dug they dug these out, and there it's a nuclear waste dump now, and it's, you know it's just a desecration. What what are some uh, with your conversations with other folks that are impacted by the same kind of resource extraction um, solutions? Have you has there been any kind of um, ideas as to how to deal with this problem well people it would be really good if people um we could get more of our local community to come out to the public meetings the public hearings that they have um if the the language and in, in some of these documents and um testimonies could be more comprehensible there's a, a document being finalized right now called the los alamos historical document retrieval act and it's for the first time when this is comes this is going to be finalized this year and this is a project that's been over a span of 10 years and for the first time we're going to have documentation that shows what they've been releasing into the environment it's not complete there's some gaps in it um a lot of material has been you know classified and they weren't able to access it um but it's it's still pretty good and you know the one of the most telling lines in that document is that um new mexico is and the los alamos labs are more polluted than the top three nuclear sites in the nation combined based on what they found had been released into the environment. And so that statement alone is, is cause for a lot of action to be taken, you know, and I think using this documentation that's coming out to, to people's advantages with these issues and, um, you know, maybe working to to get more information out there. There's a, the public hearings we just had about the, the state, the, this, the disposal renewal for the permit, um, they're uh, they're fighting putting up just the public information repository. They think it's okay to just have everything online and, and digitalized, but in rural communities, we don't have um, a lot of people didn't even have access to the internet still. And you know, it would take s the perspective of a really elitist, privileged background to say that everyone has access to internet and computers, and that our libraries have the the capability to to, d to download these like. Well, you can imagine like by ten binders of information that they expect people to be able to read online. You know, it's not realistic. So making sure that people have access to the information and documentation that they need. And, um, well, also I, I would say that you know the folks that are impacted on the ground aren't necessarily um, uh, nuclear scientists. Uh, and and the other part of that is the language scenario in terms of getting uh, people's testimonies. Uh, how ha has that been um, part of the problem? Let's say I don't know about problem, but you know because it's not if it if you don't speak um, English, then a lot of times you're kind of separated out of the process. Mm -hmm. It is a problem. There's a lot of biases in the system as far as language, and we are trying. We are advocating for it being um, these documents being printed in as many languages as possible. You know, there's a lot of um, native speaking communities. There's a lot of Spanish-speaking communities um, that are part of the impacted population. And also, um, you know, the technical language, like you say, is a whole other language in itself. And um, it's, what, what it's, it's all, there's also that bias with, like, academia. If, you know, they, if you don't have, like, a PhD, they're not going to 
necessarily um, take what you say as as expert testimony at some of these things. I could have my, my grandpa that's been working the land for 80 years and say what's happening to his crops and his land and things he's noticed, but it's not going to have the same weight as, say, like a doctor from the labs that's got like a PhD and a master's and been working in this technical area for like 40 years, you know, but yet the both knowledges should be as the equally valued. If uh, you wanted folks to, if there was a message that you wanted to communicate to the folks uh, or, or a action that you would like for folks to do, what would that be? It would be to call your legislatures, um, call your representatives, um, advocate for, for legislation, for um, health studies, for including people in the um, as part of being classified as part of the downwind community so that they could get access to free health care, advocate for cleanup, advocate for a halt for, for further nuclear production and, and focus instead on cleanup, advocate for a change in mission to, you know, alternative energy, clean energy, which isn't, <laughs> which isn't green nuclear, <laughs> that doesn't exist. So, um, you know, there's a lot of things you could do. I have um, create awareness in your communities, um, write letters of support, you know, just... I think we need to get more down to just talking to people and, and uh, spreading the knowledge that we know on like a grassroots level. And you know, the other thing that I always often say is part of the conversation is conservation, is that maybe we could turn off the electricity that we don't need, or maybe we need to use less. Maybe, you know, electricity has only been around for what, a hundred and some years? And uh, humankind has, has existed for thousands of years up to this moment. And uh, maybe we don't need all that or all this. Yeah, it's 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 definitely good to to live simply and. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> and and who else do we have with us here? My name is Vicky Downey, and I'm from Tetsuge and working with uh, the women. Um, coming to the forum, we were able to meet with the indigenous peoples up the area and the women from this area opened the the meeting with a water ceremony and they asked um, the delegates to bring water from their areas and so we brought water and put it in a copper bowl and put our prayers and our thoughts into the water to to cleanse the water of the world to cleanse the pollution out of the water and to cleanse the earth, the mother earth that we have, the air that we have. Um, and it was a long ceremony. We introduced ourselves and said our prayers. And the water, because we're by the river here, uh, that water was poured into the river after the ceremony was over. And the rains came. Um, and the Thunder Beans were here with us during this meeting. And I want people to know that, that, you know, that our ancestors were here with us. They're always here with us in the work that we do, that we're, and as indigenous peoples, we're on the road to healing and we're healing our communities, working with our children, teaching our children. Um, one of the things that we also learned was that to remind everybody that everyone is good, that, you know, we're all good. And I think what we want is the non-indigenous peoples to stand with us and support us in our issues and um, whatever, they, whatever their expertise is, that they, they support us. And when the gathering for this forum started, the indigenous peoples were the ones that marched in front. And we were told in our prophecies that a time would come that the world would be looking to indigenous peoples for solutions. And we're there now. And so, um, but we still need to be recognized and respected and acknowledged. And that's what we're doing here at the forum is educating people as to who we are as a people and reminding them that they are also people and that they have responsibilities to take care of the earth, 
the water, the air, and the fire. So thank you for having us today. And uh, uh, once again, the uh, uh, website of your organization. www.tewawomenunited.org. Um, T e w a w o m e n u n i t e d. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank, thank you, you for Bye. having us. And this is 2010 U.S. Social Forum in Detroit.